If you're in real estate, you know that you need a CRM, but there's a challenge. There's so many different CRMs out there and a lot of them can be quite costly. So we have built a CRM for you all within Notion. Now, if you're not familiar with Notion, you can just go to notion.so and download Notion. Now, this is a fantastic tool with a ton of different things that you can do in order to organize your business. But today, what we're looking at is specifically the real estate CRM. So let's dive into it and have a look at how we can use it. So first off, when we get into the CRM, the first thing you're going to need to do is come up to the top right and press duplicate. This is going to move it over into your own Notion workspace and then you can use it, adapt it, change it however you see fit. Coming down here, there's some information on how to actually duplicate it. It's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is come up here and press duplicate. Then coming down here, this is going to be very important. So these are the stages that we'll all be using. Now these are tied to the Rev Real Estate School stages. That being said, you can change these for your own business, but these tend to work quite well. So we have lead stages, we have active stages, we have SOI stages, and we have additional stages. So coming down here, let's break these down a little bit more detail. First off, we have the lead. So the lead is somebody who we haven't had a two-way conversation with. So at this point in time, we actually haven't had a conversation or a back and forth over email. And so we're not actually going to have any automated follow-ups here. Instead, we just have to stay on top of these people. This is going to make more sense when we get actually into the CRM. Then we have warm. So these are people that may be thinking of moving probably within the next year or so, or people that we think may be moving within the next year or so. And we're going to be automated to follow up with them every 30 days. Then we have hot. These people are looking to buy or sell within the next probably six months. And then we're going to be reminded to follow up with them every seven days. Then from there, we have the active stages. So we have active, pending, and firm. Active means you have a signed agreement with them. You're out helping them buy a home or their home is listed. Then we have pending, which means it's subject to contingencies. And then we have firm. And firm just means that we're awaiting possession. After they've gone through the transaction, we move them into one of these three stages, or we could also move them here. So these three stages are what we call the SOI stages. Now we focus a lot on SOI because of the value of this particular category. So we've segmented these people into three different groups. We have our super connectors and friends. These are people we want to stay in touch with regularly. So we're going to be reminded to follow up with them every 60 days. We have SOIA. So these are people that aren't necessarily looking to transact, but we want to have a good relationship with them. We're going to be reminded every 90 days. And then we have those who we still really like and we want to stay in touch with, but we're just realistically not going to stay in touch with them every 90 days. Then we have the SOIB, which is 180 days. Now we have on our additional stages, we have support. So this could be your lenders. This could be your home inspectors. This could be your attorneys, anything that helps support your business. They're all going to go here and we are going to be reminded to follow up with them every 180 days, because of course they can be a great source of referrals too. Then we have archive. So these are people that we would work with again if they reached out, but realistically, we're just not gonna stay in touch in a one-to-one -to -one capacity. We move them into the archive. And then we have dead. These are people that we do not want to work with again. So we just kinda wanna drop them here and then forget about them. That's the dead stage. So we're going to have to know this as we move into the CRM. So those are our main stages. We are going to have to keep those in mind, but of course we also have this resource for us to double check to see where we wanna put somebody. Moving along, coming down here, we have notes. So notes come in two different formats. Number one is you just had a meeting with somebody and there's no real action, or there's a meeting with somebody where there is action required. So let's say that there's no action required. I can just press new note here, open the page up by pressing right here. And then from within here, I can go new note. And we can associate this to a given contact and we'll show you where the contacts are and we can add a date to it. Now, let's say that you added this note added a note and you assigned it to a certain contact that you're working with, there you go. And we have the date is going to be, there we go. Now from here, we're going to see it show up in our no action list, but if that was to change and we needed to move it, we can just move it over to action needed. And this is just segmented so that we can easily go and see where we need action to be done. Coming down here, we have our active and pending clients. So specifically, these are the people that we're gonna to have to stay in touch with on a regular basis. They either have signed agreements or it is subject to contingency. So we're gonna to have to stay in touch with them. So we want a very, very easy view just to see who we have in our active file and who we have in our pending file. That's here for us. Now, as we're coming down here, we have all of our contacts. Okay, so here are all of our contacts. 
And what you're going to notice here is there's a number of different fields. We're going to go through a few of them, but we're not going to go through all of them. So first off, we have our contact name. So if you wanted to add a new person, we're going to add the new person. Let's say Joe Buyer. There we go. And then we're going to open Joe up right here. Now in opening Joe up here, are all the different fields that we have. So first off we have the stage. So remember we have to select our stage. So let's say Joe's hot and then he's looking to buy within the next six months. There we go. We could have phone number, email, job, and then partner name, email, phone number, job. And then we have address. So let's say Joe's address right now is one, two, three, four main street. There we go. Investment property address, family members, names, kids are, There we go. Then we have pets names. This one is an interesting one, triggers. So triggers are things that are of interest to them so that when we're following up, we can follow up in a way that's interesting to them. So we can say, you know, they like hiking and cooking. There we go. Last activity date. So let's say we reached out to Joe. The last time we reached out to him was actually the 23rd. There we go. So that was our last activity date. Then we have these. So we have referred by. So let's say that Joe was referred by Michael. There we go. So now this is going to track for us who referred who. And then you're also going to see here that there's a referred. So if he referred somebody, so let's say he referred over here, Ryan Reynolds, there we go. And now within Ryan Reynolds, we're also going to see that it has been connected between the two. And then we have notes. So let's say that we have a note here and this note that we had related to him. There we go. Now it's related back to that. And then we can also add potential GCI. So if there's a GCI of 10,000, we can put that there. Now we have this follow-up. We do not have to do anything for this. Okay, so let's go back to our main sheet right here. We have Joe Buyer, and coming along here, it says follow-up. Now, why does it say that? It says that because if we look here, he's in the hot stage. So if we come back up here and we look under the hot stage, our automation is every seven days. So coming down here, the last time we spoke to him was over seven days ago. Therefore, it's going to say follow up. If instead we wanted, we reached out to him yesterday, we're going to do this and then it's going to be blank. So there's no action. So depending on the stage and depending on our last activity date, it's going to tell us to either follow up or not. Very, very handy, very handy for us. And then you can also, of course, click into Joe and come down here and add new contact. And then writing in here, we can write down any notes that we'd like about him as he's going through the process, maybe showings that we've done, likes that he has with homes, likes that he, or dislikes that he has with homes, whatever we'd like, we can just put in right here. Okay, coming down here, we have all of our contacts, but now it's viewed in a pipeline form. So for example, we have Joe Buyer here. Joe could have started as a lead and then he moved into warm and then he moved into hot. Whoops. Make sure he's in there, moved into hot. And then he signs a buyer agreement and then he buys a house and then he's waiting possession. And then after possession has occurred, we decided, you know what? We wanna stay in close contact with Joe. So we're going to move him into SOIA. There we go. And then coming along here, we have support archive and dead, of course, as well. So if you ever don't see anything, you can just press more on the side, just like I did there, and you're going to extend it. And then coming down here, we have a calendar view for you as well. So all of this is a way that you can stay in touch with your clients and do so in a way that just keeps everything visual as well as very, very cost effective. So if you don't have a CRM, this is a fantastic tool for you. There's a lot of different CRMs within Notion and there's different templates out there, but this one is specifically for real estate agents. Hope you enjoy it.